Growing up, my mom was like, oh, you know, do you know what bun sale means? So the minute you hear the sizzle, she's like, that's sale. Just let it sale, sale, sale. And I was like, what does that even mean? And she's like, it's sizzle. Ooh. My name is Helen Nguyen, and I am the chef owner of Saigon Social, a Vietnamese restaurant located in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And today we're going to be making bun sale, a sizzling crepe. First, we're going to make the batter. We're going to start with all the dry ingredients. So what we have here is rice flour, cornstarch, I'm going to do some salt, turmeric, and give that a good mix. And then we are going to add water. I like starting off with warm water just so that everything gets mixed very well. But as you're cooking, make sure that the batter is cool and not hot because I feel like it affects the texture of the finished product. I'm also going to add coconut milk because I like the taste of the coconut in the batter. My mom doesn't, so she just sticks to water. And then a secret ingredient that's not so secret, we're gonna add about six ounces of beer. If you don't like the beer taste, you can use club soda. Some of my friends actually use 7-Up too, but it's more for like the carbonation. So you can see that it's turning like a nice yellowish taupe color. If you like your crepes a little bit on the lighter side, then you just add a little less turmeric powder. If you like a little bit darker, you add a little bit more. I feel like the turmeric taste is very faint, so you shouldn't have to worry about that too much at all. We'll let this sit while we chop some scallions. We'll do about one cup of scallions. Just the green parts. We'll let this sit and rest for a little bit. We can get started on the proteins. I usually take a slab of pork belly about this size, and then I'll just slice it into thin strips. I like leaving the skin on just because I love the texture. It's like both soft, chewy. You got all three layers of like the fat and the meat. If you were to travel back in Vietnam, you'll see that a lot of different stalls will specialize in different types of bun sale. If you go um, to the cities that are a little bit more coastal, then what you'll find is a lot of shrimp, a lot of squid, sometimes octopus head. But in the city, I think it's just very common to see pork belly, shrimp, and mung bean. Put in the bowl. We're going to add a little bit of salt, sugar, fish sauce, say about like three or four tablespoons. Give it a good mix. And then here we have shrimp. It's already peeled and deveined. And then mung bean. So the mung bean usually come in 16 ounce bags if you were to go to an Asian grocery store and they come dry. So this is what it looks like in its raw form. You can get them in their shells like this. They also sell them peeled. I like using the peeled ones because it's just one less step for me to worry about. And what I normally do is I'll soak it for about an hour and then I'll steam them. If you, you know, don't like steaming, then you can just add a little bit of water just so that the beans are submerged. And then bring them to a boil and then simmer it until it's soft. You just kind of like wait until you see the texture that you like and you take it out. Okay, so that looks really nice and ready to go. We got the pan on, it's hot. So the trick to this is you're just gonna add a little bit of oil, maybe like half a tablespoon. I think growing up back in Vietnam, seeing all of the street stalls, you know, they always douse everything with oil, but it's also because they use different types of pans that control the heat better. So I'd always add like two to three tablespoons of oil. What usually happens is that it gets a little bit too slippery and then everything, it just won't hold its shape. Even this might be a little bit too much, so we'll just transfer it over there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cook the pork belly. A lot of the fat is going to render, which is also why you don't wanna to add too much oil. See, even when you add the pork belly, you can see, it makes a sale sound, right? <laughs> At this point, we can add three pieces of shrimp, a little bit of onions, turn the heat back on. I like setting my proteins on one side, that way, you know, when I flip it, it's a lot easier to navigate. Here we go. What we're gonna try to do at least is have a very nice thin layer. If you like yours a little bit thicker, you wanna add a little bit more batter. I think right now the heat's on medium high. Once the batter hits the pan, I would turn it down to a medium because you don't wanna scorch the bottom. So at this point, I'm going to add the mung bean, a lot of it because I love mung bean. And then some bean sprouts. We are going to cover it 
so that one, you're cooking the bottom, two, you're essentially steaming the bean sprouts. I'd say we'll let that sit about a minute. In the meantime, let's repeat that process again with a second one. At home, we have at most four going at the same time just because you want to eat it fresh while it's still hot and crispy. Everything is sale. I think at most I can probably cook four at a time, but if you go to the street stalls in Vietnam, their setups is very crazy. You'll see like a man or, or a woman sitting with 12 like coal stoves with these skillets going on at the same time and they're just constantly flipping. Ooh, sale, bun sale. Add some more beans, some bean sprouts. And again, we're gonna bring this temperature down low. Let it cook. Let's check on this guy. You see the edges? It's starting to cook. It doesn't want to quite lift yet, which means it's not done. At this point, I like to increase the heat up by a tad. And this is where you add the excess oil to the edges. This is going to help crisp up the edges and the bottom. I'm just gonna leave it uncovered, just so all the moisture evaporates and we'll let it cook. My dad, he was the bun sale king in the family. My mom was more of, of, of the brazier. He was the king of all of the different rice cakes and crepes. Because it requires a lot of patience. My mom probably would have given up. She's like, <laughs> make it yourself. You gotta be careful too, because you see, I mean, as you can see here, the heat was a little bit too high, and so it's starting to brown, which is okay. Ooh, you hear that? At this point, it's a little bit soft, but I feel pretty good about it, so I'm going to flip it. Ooh. Super sale. <laughs> and you can see that there's a lot of residual oil and fat here, so I don't think I'm gonna need any more. I'm just gonna let it sit. Turn the temperature down so that it'll slowly cook and not burn. Because what you're trying to go for is that nice golden color. While we're waiting for this to cook, let's work on the nuk jam, the dipping sauce. So here we're gonna do three tablespoons of sugar. To that. Fish sauce. The idea is just to get the sugar dissolved. So I mean, at this point, I can take it off the heat. We just need the sugar to dissolve, and then one big clove of garlic, minced, more or less to taste. Some Thai chili, bird's eye chili. I mean, these are green, but essentially carry the same heat. Okay. Mix that together. And now we add lime juice. That's a base recipe that I like to use, just because I feel like it keeps everyone happy. For me, I like things a little bit more salty. My mom likes things a little sweeter. My sister likes things a little bit more tart. So you can make adjustments as to whichever way you want. Yes. Nuk mam jam. Nuk mam means fish sauce. Jam means dip. So it's like a fish sauce, fish sauce dipping sauce? Fish dipping sauce. <laughs> as you're cooking this, you're just gonna have to figure out where your hot spot on the pan and on the stove is and just kind of move it around and make sure that you're giving the edge enough time to fully crisp. So as you can see, this one right here, beautiful. I'm just gonna bring this up just a little bit more and while we're doing that, let's assemble our platters. What I have here, some green leaf lettuce. Normally I like using the Vietnamese shiso, which is also known as tieto. The leaves are purple. We have the mint. Voila. So you break one of these guys off. I'm gonna use this spatula. Throw it in here. We're gonna add some shiso. I like tearing it apart. Some mint. And look how cute this is. We're gonna dip it. Mmm. Boho. <laughs> it's delicious. So I got a really big bite of mung bean which I like. It did get like the chewy texture of the pork, but then the crisp of the pancake, I think complements it very well. And then you have the mint and then the shiso and you know, the sweet, sour and spicy kick of the nuk mam jam. So it's a lot of different flavors going on. And the beauty of it is aside from the frying, it's relatively healthy. It's gluten-free. <laughs> so there you have it. It's Saigon Bun Sale. For the recipe, click on the link below or come visit me at Saigon Social and be happy to make you one. And the way that my mom likes to eat it, rice paper. 
My mom lives on rice wrap. She wraps everything every day. Mmm. There you have it. Sizzle and pop.